Welcome back to FTB Interactions, and it's time, it's time to go and automate our water source, our water-powered source, that is. And it turns out they're actually surprisingly difficult. I've built this about five different ways, and they're, well, a little tricky. Uh, the idea is that you power them with water underneath, and that's perfectly fine, but you've got to be careful about putting water on top, and water on top just helps to automate it. We'll come back to that in a second. So how does this work? So let's say we want a water powered saw and we want to use some conveyor belts. So let's put a couple of conveyor belts in and they of course don't work with uh, with with birch wood because you need an inserter. So if we just grab some birch wood as well, we need that. So yep, that doesn't actually work. So whoops, get off the conveyor. OK, uh, instead, we need to uh, just get ourselves an inserter upgrade, which works perfectly well. So on goes one, it's going to go through the saw. Now, note where it comes out. You'd think you could just put a conveyor on the other side and automate this to pull out of there. Well, it doesn't work. What happens is if you do that, and it does actually pull blocks out of the, the saw, but it will pull the wood out of the saw, not the, not the planks. Um, you can put a whitelist on, say only plug, only pull planks, but then once it gets to the planks, it's not actually in the saw anymore. That's just floating, free floating on top of the saw. See, you just pick it up. So we can't really automate the output like that. So we have to have just the input automated and the output. We're going to have to just assemble now something else. Now we can do this with water, but <laughs> uh, after rebuilding this a few times, um, basically, if you put water along the top flowing, it will counteract the saw. If your water flows that way, it's going to have the same direction as the bottom water and the saw will stop. Um, you uh, have it going the other way and then, well, it goes on top of here, which then interferes with how you want stuff going in. So the only reasonable way to actually get this done seems to be to send it sideways. So if we have something like this and then go with a couple of a um, couple of uh, hoppers like that, we should have an ability if we put this together, right? It's me. So, yeah, that's that's not a given. Um, if we just go around here, let's not fall off. And there, like that, we should be able to pour water into the center here that will come forwards. The only sort of, well, that's not actually a problem. We just have to make sure that we block off either side. And will that actually work like that? Uh, if we put down two water source blocks, one there, one there, break those, they should flow towards the middle. And because this is not an infinite water pack, I guess these remain uh, flowing water. And now will this send stuff in there? So if I just let me put a torch down, it's getting dark and uh, we don't want darkness just yet. So if I put down some uh, silver birch and oops, this is why we're going to need a chest at the back or something like that. There it goes. So the silver birch is going through. It should pop onto the top and get pushed through into the hoppers. Hopefully, uh, it's not. It's too high. Ah, okay, the hopper level is too high. Mm, that's another sort of problem with this. So let's just get that sorted. Let me just fill in this top section for a second, and let's get access to our items again. So our center section is going to have to go one lower. Let's get everything down further which is slightly annoying, I guess. Uh, so we're gonna have to put our, whoops, put our chest here. And then we're gonna have to sort this out with water. But uh, the idea, if we can go around the back just temporarily, um, I need a space to step into here. Like that. That should then hopefully work, but then we've got to be careful about it going into uh, this water and then interfering. Hopefully it won't interfere, but let's give this a go as well. So um, that can go there. I've just got to be careful because I only have chests at the moment for this not to be... Um, <laughs> I need to be able to open the chest, basically. So will that work? That looks more likely to work. And that's now flowing out the back, which isn't exactly what I want, but I can put a block there to stop that. Okay, and now if we try it with the silver butch at the back, 
Will you work? Okay, going to go through our saw. And it looks like it's been taken. Yep, that's working. So we've now got basically automated water source. And I guess we can knock a few blocks out that aren't needed. Um, <laughs> yeah, some of them still are, however. Uh, are you needed? Yeah, that's. Does that stop? This? Yeah, that, see, that's stopping the saws. Gotta be careful about where you let water run. And they start again. So, yeah, we're all fine. That uh, could do with. Well, I guess we can have a play around with removing blocks, but I can safely take out the bottom blocks. I just can't take out the one at the back. So now we should have the ability to be automated. So if we get a chest here for a second, and now if I put an extraction upgrade on that chest, oh well, on the, the belt next to the chest, I should say. Uh, that. Oh, that's gone onto that block. Uh, that actually wouldn't be terrible ish. Um, let's just get that back again. So if instead I broke this block, yep, it's going to object. Oh, oh, don't, oh, oh. <laughs> Wasn't head off the platform. <laughs> uh, that's, that'll be a way to go. So there we go. So that will then let me do an insertion there and an extraction there. And things are a little bit more compact. So now on the insertion, you can have um, basically, yeah. So inserting items, touching the upgrade. And this one, you can choose to blacklist certain things or whitelist certain things. So you can say only extract stuff from this chest. But in this case, we're going to need to open the chest. That's annoying. Um, and that is where the water is. So I've got to... Uh, let me just put an extra block in. I don't care if... Let me just put the torch back. I don't care if I have to... Uh, have water on top of the chest. Oh no, it's fine. It's safe. It's going straight down. No problem. It's even easier. So let's just put the torch back um, here and that should be doable. So now if I put in some of uh, this butch wood, it should automatically start pulling out and be starting processing. And should go through here to the front where it should start to appear. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, it's appearing. Good. So that's that entirely automated. And I'll probably will move that, that uh, torch to the front just so I can see stuff. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Maybe you can make it smaller. Let me know in the comments if you can. With our water source up and running and happily providing me with lots of planks for free without using up my saturation, we need to head towards the overworld or at least having the portal to the overworld and I thought we'd need obsidian for it, but no, we don't. That obsidian comes for free with this upgrade to the pack. And it's in, uh, I got it from in God's plan. Yeah, here on the left-hand side, Philosopher's Stone. He did give me the equivalent exchange last time. I think it's been added this time to give you eight obsidian as well. So you can click on that and get the eight obsidian. There's also a few quests up here that you can use to get some wood to iron chest upgrades, which are quite, quite nice. The signal on conversion kit, which we're not going to need just yet, but I, I appreciate the gesture. And uh, we can get some flint blocks from in this tab. But other than that, we are back to here. So it asks us to make a leather vest. It said it's probably useful for us to do so. So you've got to make some more hardened leather. We made our mitts from and we can use cutters, flint cutters. They're easy to make to make a leather tunic. OK, so that gives me some armor. Not very much, but uh, Better than nothing, I suppose. And uh, we'll put those cutters away for now. Uh, that is going to give us four more hardened leather to be able to use as we like. So that's a good reward. Uh, and then we're pretty much through here without going through better building ones. What does it take for a builder's wand? Builder's wand? That's also alchemy array with some low covalence dust and a stick. So I think actually we're just going to go ahead and do that. So local valence dust, I've already made some more and a stick to catalyze this. So that should give us everything we need there. And then I've done a few more quests here. White candle, you need to make white candles from um, wax and string. Going through candleberry seed, you need to actually then 
get a seed in your inventory and then to tallow i've not done yet but that gives us some more candles i'm not too concerned about doing it just yet and then down here we've got basically the overworld block now the overworld block ah there's our builders ones that'll come in useful uh the world uh, the overworld blocks need sugarcane so you're gonna need it from your very sugarcane things oh by the way they get a comment saying yeah it, I, they didn't mean eight in one direction they actually meant eight blocks around it so uh, we should be able to make this more efficient just by having uh, one here and removing that one, which is exactly what this is doing right now. Uh, so if I just put a nice block back, and if I get our little uh, bonus meter thing, it should show that this is running at a good level of efficiency. There it is, efficiency meter. And that is 10%, good. And then if we remove this center one, uh, this is going to put a hole through the platform, but that won't be a problem. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So I will just put in some cobble. We should get the same efficiency here. And this one will still be low, but if we take this one out, we should be fine. So we need to remove the stuff out of that. I'm not dumping that into my inventory right now. But yeah, we can just fill this with squares as long as the center square is actually free of... of uh, any surrounding block then we'll be fine and we'll be able to get strainer bases i need to craft more of the strainers but we'll do i'll do that off camera so uh yes overall block we need the sugarcane from those once you have sugarcane you're going to need some uh, stone so i'll put some in our kilns which is happily smelting away and then we're going to need to craft another couple of blocks so we need these reed blocks and they're cross tone tiles or x tone tiles or however you pronounce that around a sugar cane you get eight of these so you only need you know uh what is it so it's going to be four per overworld block is it it is four for per overworld block so one gets two overworld blocks you need five sugar cane here but you do actually need to make some chisels well any kind of stone and then stone slabs which we can already make up so i'm just going to take half of this and just convert them into stone slabs and let's see how far this goes those in the middle that'll make us 40 tiles and then i need the sugar cane where's my sugar cane i thought i had some yes i do and then we can make that make these that makes us 40 reed blocks the reed blocks can be combined with the paper wall paper walls is just paper around a stick and paper you can make in your work table by smashing sugar game flat again so the only remaining things in here is the seared blocks specifically seared stone now if we could cast this it would be fine but i don't see any melt oh hang on melter how can we get seared stone in here we're going to need to make a basin that much is for certain and grout we can put in there so if we have grout we can do it which means clay gravel and sand and we can get all of those so uh, i think i already have clay blocks let me clean up my inventory and then we should be able to be okay to proceed okay nice clean inventory so then we'll just make up a new mortar uh with some stone hopefully it's been cooked up yeah that'll do so a new mortar i've probably got one in the chest somewhere but i may as well just craft one We'll convert this bone across into bone meal and then the bone meal can combine and I can just get uh, nine, uh, actually just seven ceramics and we will, have you finished yet? Probably haven't finished yet. Uh, how many of these have I got to go? Oh, uh, well I'd have to, yeah, I really need proper hoppers. We need to get iron. There we go. I should just leave one spare. And that can go in there. And that will cook up into some actually fired porcelain bricks, which which I've got. Ooh, do I actually need a basin? Uh, let me just see. One of those should pop out in a second. Give me some porcelain. Ooh, we've got some actual cooked chicken. I'm just going to see if this is actually any good. Uh, nourishing snack. Uh, nourishing light meal. And snack. Okay. So we just got some cooked turkey. Anyway, I need to actually craft that kitchen area from Pam's Harvest Craft. We'll get a casting basin. Let's just replace this block. 
Uh, yeah, I can go into the chest and put our casting basin in. And then if we put grout in here, it should start crafting up, which means I probably could do with just another hopper uh, to feed into here. Can I have another hopper? Do I have one? I should have plenty of wood around. Let's just make another hopper, shall we? Oh, look, let's make quite a few because we can use them as an early piping system. So let's just get 20 trap doors. And now I should be able to just uh, make sure I go and put those back into my saw. So let's just get this. Cool. So good there. And let's put them into the top. Of which I just need a chest. One chest, please. Of any kind. Chest. There we go. And you can just basically smelt grout. That is going to come out here. And I can flip this on. Not This isn't as good as the uh, the redstone clock I've noticed of, um, <laughs> of the, the other pack of FDB Skyblock. That's configurable stuff. This one is not. This is the old style redstone clock, uh, our classic redstone clock. But in any case, we are now making seared stone. And the seared stone we should be able to use for smeltery in future. But uh, for now, we uh, will be able to use this for overworld blocks. We just need about... Uh, how many was it for the overall blocks? We need two per block. We need 10 blocks, so 20 seared stone. All right, let's wait for that to finish, but not on camera. Now we should be able to make our overall portal blocks. Yep. Um, why isn't that making? Do I need do I need the lava one? I do need the lava one. Okay, let's just take that back out again. Thankfully, I do still have some lava left in here, so that is should be hopefully simple. Uh, yes, I've got 10 overall portal blocks. Good. If you scrolled here first, you're an overachiever. Well, in our case, uh, we actually get two teleporters and two ender shards. Okay, so they are for simple teleporters. I need to figure out how they work. Hopefully cross-dimensional travel. Uh, I would definitely like that, but um, we need an area to put our portal, and we need to basically make it enclosed just in case anything comes through from the other side. So uh, I guess we got to choose somewhere for that. So simple teleporters appear to work identically to um, Draconic Evolution's dislocators. So we should be able to shift click, shift, sneak right click a point that we want to link our Ender Shard to. And if we put it into a teleporter, the teleporter should bring us back here. Now, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Ooh, that is actually just marked that up when you're nearby. Good. I'm not going to worry too much about that until I see what the other side is like. Uh, we're going to go through the overworld portal. I need the blocks for that. Uh, and how do we actually... What do we actually uh, need to basically make the portal? Uh, light the portal with your Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, I'm not going to take the Philosopher's Stone with me, but I will take the uh, portal blocks and my Philosopher's Stone. And then I'm probably going to want to basically be able to make up this block, this, this doorway with some kind of player only door, just in case something comes through. There we go, just using these white candles. And we should be able to make the portal. Yeah, let's go and put this away somewhere nice and safe <laughs> that's not in my inventory. And uh, just in case. Uh, because to make another set of these also, to make another set of these teleporters, needs us to get into other mods. Or we can't make them except for the first set, other than making the through Astral Sorcery. So Astral Sorcery is going to be part of this pack. All right, so we've got a portal. We should go through and see how well it goes. I have crafted a flint sword. It's not terribly good, but it is just a, a, a starting sword to get, us, to get us going. It automatically came with Fire Aspect 2. Uh, let's go and explore, and this hope, well, this may kill me, may not, let's see. Okay, here we are on the other side, so I'm immediately just going to take the, the nether procedure, which is to say, we're going to craft a room. Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't bring my, my pickaxe with me, that's fine, I'll just not have to make mistakes. Ha, <laughs> me, not making mistakes. Okay, let's just... Put this down here and then we should be able to use our builder's wand to build this wall good 
and we'll use it on this side to build this wall. Uh, very, very nice builders one, this actually. I'm very impressed. Uh, is this, uh, yeah, it's extra utility too. Uh, just makes sense. You hold shift to just make a horizontal section, hold control to make a vertical section. Uh, it's, it's great. I, I like that all the way through. Yeah, very happy. So there we go. And uh, yes, that's me losing some hearts. But uh, we should now have a reasonably, uh, reasonably safe area to come back to. Let's just put in the torch, get rid of a few things. Uh, and we need a door, of course, but uh, that's fine. So if I want to come back here, I have a teleporter. We can install an Ender Shard into said teleporter. And that hopefully will take us across dimension. Um, and then, of course, we can put another one going the other way to bring ourselves back here. Uh, I just step on, presumably. Is you not going to go across dimension? Oh, that's such a shame. Hmm. Oh, well, unless you need, a, a, you know, some kind of um, switch. But I will have to go and look at more mods to actually do that. Oh, hang on. My Ender Shard's still here. Um, do I step on now? Are you going to teleport me? It's no good, no, no better than a portal if that's the case. Hmm. Teleport. Go. <laughs> I need to look this up, clearly. And for all you screaming, it is apparently just sneaking on it. Uh, so, sneak. Yeah, I'm sneaking. It's not teleporting me. So, yeah, either the mod is having problems or we just need to perhaps Go and figure it out. It may well be something. Can I actually break this? No, I need a pickaxe to break it. I don't want to accidentally just delete it from the game. So let's step back through, go and pick up a few bits and pieces now that we have a permanent portal and go for a bit of a look around our overworld. I did check. I had to and apparently doesn't work cross dimension. Such a shame. So I just have my room sealed up and then we can just jump into the room and go through the portal. I would have liked to go and cross dimension, but that may be Draconic Evolution. Is Draconic Evolution in this pack? Uh, Draconic? Draconic Evolution is in this pack, so we can get to Dislocators once we get to that. However, out here, uh, I guess we're going to need, still need a door of some kind, and uh, it's dark now. Is that a structure? No. Uh, I'm going to need to wait for dawn. I really could do with a bed of some kind. That would be great, wouldn't it? Uh, let's just have a sort of neat little sort of Z, uh, well, S shape, if you like, going through here. And you probably can't see too much of this because it's dark-ish. And uh, let's just wait for dawn and then we'll go and show you the uh, overworld. So let's just get this done. There we go. And that will do. I'll just put in a torch to light my way home. Otherwise, uh, we're fine, I think. Yeah, it's kind of homely. Let's wait for dawn. And since we've been to the overworld, we do actually get a Terra Nova uh, trophy. Let's put that there as well. Yep, so you can see what, exactly when it was. It's been a few days since I actually uh, went and crafted that. So, um, yeah, do we have any more? Looks like we get some party equipment. Oh, that's the leather tunic. We get a honeycomb chocolate bar. Mm, OK, that will do. Uh, but no other quests have popped up as complete. We do actually need to get to tinker stuff just to get replacements for these terrible stuff that we start with, terrible tools, and that'll be important. But we've pretty much completed all the important stuff down here. Uh, there is architect saw bench for decoration stuff. Uh, the tallow we need to get. Oh, interesting. Cycling building scepter. Now, this is something I actually want to build in the other pack as well, the Sky Factory. Uh, the cycling building scepter is apparently good for building vertically down, but I haven't actually used it before. And vertically down makes it much easier, and we are able to do that already. Well, if we just get some bones, a piece of obsidian, uh, arcane ash, and I want a bone. I think that's probably going to be in one of the traps. Uh, you're full. Let's just actually empty this so that, and well, it's used all of its beta, but uh, there we got a bone. And we can use our arcane ash. So, arcane ash, the bone first. Bone, obsidian, and that should get me the building scepter. And that will let me then build down in the void if I actually need to, which is uh, quite handy. Let's just get. Um, should we cook this up or just leave it? I think I'll leave it for now. 
because I'm going to want some stuff later. The beef, however, I'm probably just going to put straight in, in here and use this to be able to get uh, some health back. Ah, uh, we actually... Uh, let's just use both of them up. It's not going to have any, any effect, but that's fine. There we go. It'll keep on cooking. There's our building scepter. So, looks much bigger than the building wand. But, uh, yeah, so what options do we have for this? Do I um, just right-click? So, uh, use blocks left to right as normal. Use rocks one by one in a pattern. Run a block each time. So, we just have to load this up with stuff, presumably. And do I just shift click hmm i'm gonna to need to actually look up how to use this unless it needs power use the mouse reel while sneaking to rotate well ah there we are bottom left of the screen we have different modes okay i need to go and figure out oh hang on that's good yeah we can just build down by doing that so the arrow is just which direction you want to build and uh, we can build down that might have been handy before I actually explored downwards uh, with, um, yeah, water, and it didn't go well. Uh, but th this is certainly a nice way to, way to build down. And that we're just going to keep sending it down to the bottom of the world so that I can always align to that post if I need to. That's fine. I do quite like that. We'll need to do that in Sky Factory as well, and I'll probably show that over there. Okay, so with that done, with that loose leads to the formation wand. And formation wand. Uh, let's get that. Is just our cyclic wand. Ah, uh, we need to make another cyclic wand. I don't want to use up that existing one at all. But the formation wand doesn't seem to say what I can use this for. However, I can just get another bone and some more obsidian, and then we can convert that over. Now let's just see. Do I have any left in any of these? Uh, let's just remove all of you. Clean out these. I need to actually put these in an array with some hoppers. No, I don't have any bo more bones. That's fine. I'll make them some more grain bait later. That's not a problem. We're approaching the end of the episode anyway, so we've got to the overworld. I just want to go across there once it comes to light, and we'll take a look to see if there's anything within range of our starting spot over there that we want to take a look at. And it's daytime. We've got a fairly standard overworld. Let's go and take a look over here. Uh, there seems to be a fairly flat area that we could actually go... Whoa, wait a second. Ah, that's just a regular skeleton, I hope. Got a sword available. Oh, no, it's a zombie. That's fine. Hello, zombie. You've got an axe. Give me an axe. Monster hunter. Yep, we got some uh, zombie uh, flesh, rotten flesh. And looks pretty standard, to be honest. Doesn't look like there's anything, well, at least within range, that we've got a problem with. So we should have a place to build over here. And this area seems quite good if we're going to actually switch across to the overworld. Put them in the comments if you've got any preferences, if you've played through FB interactions, but particularly if you know there's any issues. Ooh, uh, some food that, um, yeah, it is blackberries, but we can convert it into black dye as well. So we do get really get some of that to start off with, but having this available is actually useful. Can I actually take one of those with me? Just going to break it into sticks. That's annoying. Uh, Fine. Let's just break off the top layer then. There we go. And that looks like a very different cow. It's like an inverted cow. Hi. Hi, cow. Ah, I get cooked meat. <laughs> oh, and a regular cow. Yes, uh, so that will be fine. This is a great area for actually building. And it's not too far away from where our portal is. So I'm happy. We're in the overworld, which will probably take us into the next episode, whereby we're going to have to start thinking about what we do into, uh, well, the le less safe space. So this is the tab about the overworld. Lots of different change, uh, different ore gen stuff, changes in mob behavior or changes in the bio map. So lots of stuff to actually get through there. And I think it sort of means that um, you need to look for flowers on the surface to determine spots underneath the ground where uh, ore is to, for us to go and find ore. So that's something to think about before we get to the next episode. But for now, I will leave you alone with this. We've got a bit of automation done this episode. We've got to the overworld and got entirely through that first quest tab. And I'm quite happy with all of that progress. If you've got any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Of course, any comments for other people. 
and we'll see you in the next episode for some more FTB interactions. If you want some notifications, you can click on the bell, of course. Subscribe and share as you normally would, and uh, we'll see you next time. As always, guys, thanks for watching.